transformers. Here we have a power station. It has just made some electrical energy and wants to send it to our homes. The energy can be sent to our homes thanks to the cables that make up the national grid. However, scientists noticed that when you have a high current of electricity flowing through the cables, this can create friction. And friction means that energy is wasted as heat. So a lot of the energy that the power station created is simply wasted as heat in the air. So, to get over this problem, scientists thought of a clever idea. They would place this device, called a transformer, in the power station. This is a step-up transformer. It will increase the voltage and thereby reducing the current. For example, the voltage of the electricity in the power station is 10,000 volts. The, the transformer will increase this to 400,000 volts. Now it will make its way to our homes. However, having 400,000 volts going directly into your home can be a bit of a problem. So, we're going to put another transformer here, called a step-down transformer, which should bring down this to safe levels. For example, 230 volts. Now we can use the electricity safely in our homes. So as a general rule, so in the UK, the main electricity in our homes is 230 volts, 50 hertz, and it's an AC, which means alternating current. So what is a transformer? It's basically a iron core, which has two coils wrapped around it. A primary coil that brings electricity in, and a secondary coil that takes electricity away, once the voltage has been changed. So how does it work? Well, the iron core is used because it's magnetized. So as soon as electricity comes in from the first coil, this magnetizes the iron core, which creates a magnetic field inside the iron core. This magnetic field then passes through the second coil, which creates a current in the second coil. Now it's important to note that in the primary coil, we have to have an AC coming in, an alternating current. This is so that we can create an alternating magnetic field. We cannot use a battery, for example, as this is a DC, direct current, and this would not produce an alternating magnetic field. We want a changing magnetic field to pass through the second coil. And the only way we can do that is by using an AC current. Once we have that produced, we will now create the current in the second coil. And because the magnetic field will change in direction, that means the current in the second coil will also be an AC current. So to summarize, here's what you'll write for an exam if they asked you how does a transformer work. Number one, an alternating potential difference is in the primary coil. Number two, this creates an alternating magnetic field in the iron core. Number three, this induces an alternating potential difference. Number four, in the secondary coil. Okay, so here we have two different types of transformers, a step up and a step down. A step up transformer increases the voltage, whereas a step down transformer decreases it. Now here's how you can tell whether it's step up or step down just by looking at it. Let's start with the one on the left. Here we have the primary coils and here we have the secondary coils. We can see that the number of coils has increased, therefore it's a step up transformer. In the next one, here's the primary coils and here's the secondary coils. So the number of coils has reduced, therefore it is a step down transformer. So as long as you can see the number of coils, from that you can tell whether it's step up or step down. Okay, we're going to look at two important equations that we need to know for transformers. In this transformer, we can see that the number of coils has doubled. For example, it's gone from 2 to 4. That means 
the potential difference will also double. For example, if it was 10 volts initially, it will become 20 volts. So, when the number of coils multiplies, the potential difference also multiplies by the same factor. From this, we can create the following equation. The voltage in the primary coil divided by the voltage in the secondary coil is equal to the number of coils in the primary coil divided by the number of coils in the secondary coil. And here's where they go in the equation. Now make sure you remember this one. So we have one more to do. Let's say in the primary coil, we have a 10 volt potential difference and a 5 amp current. Of course, we can see that the voltage is going to increase as the number of coils has increased. However, the current will decrease. So using P equals VI, we can create an equation from this. Now remember, P is the same on both sides. For example, on the left, P is going to be V times I, which is 10 times 5. That's going to give us 50. On the right, P is going to be 20 times 2.5, which is also equal to 50. So the fact that power is the same on both sides, we can say the following. Voltage of primary times current of primary is the same as voltage of secondary times current of secondary. And this is the second equation that we need to know. In the next video, we'll use these to do some example calculations. Hey guys, if that video helped you, support our channel by liking, subscribing and sharing it with your friends. And more importantly, if you still have questions, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com where I will personally be there to help answer your questions. Mohammed signing out.